For those of you who know me, this is probably redundant, but for anybody who comes across my videos, my name is Sydney and I'm 25 years old and on May 11th I was diagnosed with stage 1 breast cancer. Um, I wanted to make a video because I've got a lot of questions on how I found out that, you know, I had breast cancer at such a young age and, you know, what were the steps that I took uh, following my diagnosis. Um, so start. Around May 5th or so, I believe, I was laying down, and this was actually one month after I had competed in a uh, bodybuilding show. It was my first, my fourth bodybuilding show, and I actually got first place in uh, my open class. Um, so I think me being at a low body fat kind of helped me <laughs> at that time. But I was laying down, and I actually noticed a um, lump on my left breast. It was actually a very hard nodule and it was mobile. The only reason I mentioned mobile is because a lot of doctors told me that because it was mobile, this was a good thing. Um, in actuality, cancer can be mobile. Um, it was very hard. Uh, I immediately, you know, asked my mother to take a look at it. There wasn't, you know, of course I thought in my head, I'm probably crazy, but for some reason I told her right away and I, you know, wanted her to take a look at it. My mom, um, as a medical assistant and she has been for 35 years so of course I trust her opinion so the next day she took a look at it and immediately you know she wanted to go to the doctor so we started off with my primary doctor who because we've known her for so long she said you know for peace of mind we'll go ahead and do the ultrasound because when I first went in she's you know telling my mom you know Madeline she's 25 years old this is probably nothing you know breast cancer is very rare in my age so we didn't really think too much of it. Uh, when I went to have the ultrasound, which was actually that same day, um, the ultrasound tech, when she went over the nodule, she said, you know, did you get into a car accident or did you, you know, have some kind of trauma happen to you? I'm like, um, I think I would have noticed if I had a trauma or some kind of car accident. I mean, afterwards, obviously, I tried to think, you know, was it something I did? Did I get into some kind of accident? Did I hurt myself? And maybe this is just bruising that happened later on in time. So we waited and it was probably four to five days for me to get the results. And within that four to five days, you know, your mind just starts going crazy. And on top of that, I got at least 20 to 30 opinions from different people saying, I've had the same thing happen to me and I've had the same thing happen to me and it's probably nothing, it's most likely nothing, it's most likely fibrous and this, this and that. And um, when we got the ultrasound report, he told me to go get a biopsy done. So that's when we went to go see the breast surgeon. He said that my, um, my nodule fit the characteristics of a fibroadenoma, which is normal fatty, tell, fatty tissues that women get in their breasts over time. You know, our breasts are subject to a lot of hormonal changes. So he said it fit the characteristics, but the edges weren't you know, perfectly circular. I guess they were a little bit unclear. So um, that's when he recommended the core biopsy. The breast surgeon in her office, of course, her staff was all, again, reassuring me, you're very young, this is probably nothing, you know, there's nothing to worry about. So I didn't really think too much of it still at that point. Um, she did the core biopsy in her office. She gave me an option of cutting it out right then and there, uh, doing a core biopsy, or just kind of waiting and, you know, seeing how it plays out. But we wanted answers, like, right then and there. I didn't want to play games. You know, you just don't want to leave a hard object in your breast not knowing. I guess that's just how I thought. So we did the core biopsy, and I'm thinking it's going to be like a little needle aspirate. I mean, I was a tech for five years. I know kind of how the procedure goes. Not really. <laughs> lady grabbed a screwdriver about this big, uh, shoved it in my breast after she numbed the area. It was as thick as my fingertip. And I mean, just the pressure was, uh, was, it was a traumatizing experience altogether. They have to actually go to the core of the nodule itself and take a sample from it and they send it to the lab. So on May 11th, we went into her office to get the results. And immediately when she walked in the room, we already knew that um, it wasn't good. She sat down, she put her hand on me and my mother's knee, and uh, she said it did come back as something. And uh, my mom is very cut to the chase, don't sugarcoat anything. She was like, you know, just cut, cut the shit. What is it? It's cancer, isn't it? It's the C word. 
and she said it did come back as breast cancer, you know, but there's things that we can do. And, you know, immediately when she said breast cancer, you know, like when you see in movies and people have like, um, they find out a family member has just passed away or something traumatic has just happened. And they kind of just doze off into space and everything else that the person is saying to them just becomes a distant noise in the background. That's exactly how it was for me. I just went completely blank. And there are words that I heard and immediately they tell you you need to see a radiologist, an oncologist, a nutritionist, a fertility doctor because I'm only 25 and, you know, we don't want to risk the chance of me going infertile, you know, because I want a family one day. So there's so many necessary steps that I had to follow and it was just, it was all very overwhelming. So I can say you're going to need a team you know, when these kind of things happen, you can't do it alone. There's no way I could do it alone. Uh, the first doctor I went to go see was the fertility doctor. You know, you find out that that was like $5,000 just to take your eggs out to store them. And it's $150 a month, which was like mind blowing. I'm like, how can they expect me to pay this on top of everything and bills? And I can't work now because I go to the doctor's office all the time. It was just, it was all very, very, very overwhelming. Um, as far as the surgery aspects goes, as you can see, or you really can't see, uh, I went through the bilateral mastectomy June 13th, no, June 12th, sorry. Based upon the facts that I was given from my genetic testing, from my genomic testing, from all the testing that I did to specify exactly what kind of cancer I have and what the best treatment is for me. Um, now, bilateral mastectomy means that they take all of the tissue out of your breasts and leave nothing there but the chest muscle. And then I did a full reconstructive surgery, which means they put expanders in to expand my skin for a future implant. Because um, I don't want to just be bare chested. I am 25. I still want to try to have at least as much of a normal life as I can. Um, there are two procedures to the bilateral mastectomy. There is one where you go underneath the pectoral muscle, which gives it more of a nice, natural look. And then there's above the skin. I chose to go above the skin because I love to work out. It's, it's a passion for me. I love to be active. I love to push my body and just do a lot of things. And if I went underneath my muscle, I would lose range of motion over time, which really didn't sound like an option to me. So it was kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, I may get rippling. Yeah, it may not look as pretty in the future, but the goal here is honestly survival. You know, when you hit, get hit with the word cancer, immediately, yes, you get depressed, you get sad. You know, you think, holy shit, I'm, I'm, you think I'm dying. And in a, in a sense, it, it's like your body is attacking itself. And immediately, you kind of have to go into survival mode. And that's kind of how it was for me. I immediately was like, this is not going to beat me. You know, I'm going to do what I have to do. It may hurt. It may be scary along the way. And I may sometimes feel like I'm very lost. But I know in the end that cancer will never, ever take over me. And I will always, always have control of this situation. As long as I stay positive and I have a strong mind. You know, these are the things that get me through every day. And I just want to tell people, you know, things get hard. You know, you get knocked down. Just be strong, have a strong mind, always stay positive. Don't let those negative things control your life because you know, tomorrow is never promised.